So, the new Digimon trailer's been out for a while. It's called Aplamon, and it features a young boy who inserts a special token into a device that has a round lens with a red frame, which causes a monster to appear in a cavalcade of light, sound, and music, and wait a minute... I'm getting the strangest thing of deja vu. Have I seen this before? Hmm... Now, to be fair, this isn't the first time Bandai has used a gimmick like this, where you have a little toy with a code on it that goes into a bigger toy that's able to read the code. They mostly set it aside for, like, their Tokusatsu series, like Power Rangers or Kamen Rider. And it's also not the first time they've had a Digivice that's able to read a code, like the uh, crossloader here, but... The thing is, before now they've used cards. They've never really been this... exactly like Yokai Watch before. Okay, there's no getting around this. The new toy for Aplamon is literally the Yokai Watch converted into a Digivice. This isn't the first time that a show has been converted into something that's more like Yokai Watch. You can see the Jewel Pet Magical Change I talked about before. But it's when it's something as big as Digimon, when it's something this obvious, it kind of makes me worry. Yokai Watch 3 recently released in Japan and sold almost a million units pretty much right away, so its influence isn't going to be disappearing anytime soon, which means that for us in the United States, where Yokai Watch received only a mild reception, we're going to be dealing with that fallout for quite some time. And frankly, that begs the question, why is there so much imitation in entertainment? The explanation is actually pretty simple. Aside from like the bootleg and knockoff products, those sorts of illicit things, the reason we have so much imitation in entertainment is because entertainment executives ask for it. We need something like Adventure Time. Make us a Halo killer. And the reason they ask for all these imitations, even though pretty much everybody can see right through them, is because the people in charge of the entertainment industry are not themselves entertainers. They are marketing people. They're businessmen. Reggie, the guy in charge of Nintendo of America, he used to work for, like, a pizza company, for, for what I know. He worked in consumer boxed goods. And that is actually a very different market from entertainment. Entertainment isn't fungible the way a lot of these other boxed goods are, and because they're not really entertainers first and foremost, or people who marketed for the entertainment industry, they're frequently not on top of the sorts of trends that are popular. They only know maybe one or two buzzwords, which is why everybody knew about Skylanders, which is why we saw so many flawed uh, people who tried to imitate Skylanders without really understanding the appeal or just flat out copying it straight up. And the reason I wanted to bring this up today is now it's starting to happen with Pokemon Go. I'm seeing rumors about how people are saying there's going to be a Harry Potter Go, and how Disney is floating the ideas of a, of a Star Wars Go, and I'm like, how? How are they going to make something like that that's similar to Pokemon Go? Those would never work in Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go works because it utilizes Pokemon's core engagement mechanic, which is exploring the world to find monsters to capture and interacting with other people doing the same thing. That has been Pokemon's core gimmick for 20 years, and all Pokemon Go does is layer that on top of Google Maps and Ingress so that you can now do that in real life. It is perfectly at home in the world of Pokemon, but it doesn't really work as well at all because Harry Potter and Star Wars have a completely different engagement mechanic from Pokemon that would just not translate well to Pokemon Go. But you can bet, after how successful Pokemon Go has been, we are going to see a lot of people trying to copy that success. And I worry that it's not going to go well. I worry they're going to try to copy Pokemon Go way too closely and nobody is going to like it. So what are you supposed to do about it? As a creator, you basically have an obligation to try to please these investors, these business people who are only familiar with one or two popular products and might not know the more finite ins and outs of the business. Well, the way you do that is you have a but. As in, it's like Adventure Time, but, or it's like Halo, but, what I'm saying is you need an angle, something that really sets you apart from the Brand X that you're trying to copy, because you'll never beat Brand X by copying Brand X. You beat Brand X by doing something else, because if it looks like Brand X and it smells like Brand X, people are just going to keep buying Brand X. And that is especially true in the toy industry or the entertainment industry, where 
things like toys, card games, video games, cartoon shows tend to take a lot more time and investment from the person than like a new set of pots and pans or what pizza I'm going to eat that night. And as a result, it can be very, very difficult to try to draw from one franchise onto the other. We see this mistake happen all the time when companies try to take a fan base of something that was popular that they're trying to wind down because their business model says that it's time to wind it down and try to transition them to a new franchise and it never works. In fact, it always backfires because the fan base of the old show will feel that this is just an utter betrayal and will actively hate whatever the new thing is. We saw this with Spin Master from Bakugan to Redekai, and we saw this with Lego from Ninjago to Chima. That's kind of how out of touch a lot of things are and how they don't understand how these sorts of things become popular and stick around. Now, if there's any imitator that's actually done fairly well, it's people who try to imitate Lego, because Lego is literally an infinite possibility product, but here's the thing. The last thing you can try to do is outdo Brand X, because even with all of these imitators and with the loss of its patent, LEGO is still the largest toy brand in the entire world. You are not going to beat LEGO. You are never going to beat Pokemon. You're not going to beat those sorts of things. So that's why I'm saying you need to present yourself as a viable alternative. The types of people you want to attract if you're trying to make something similar are the people who are sick and tired of it. Like, do you not like Pokemon anymore? This might do it for you. Sick and tired of Halo? We have something for you. The people who have, are disillusioned for it and want a viable alternative. And it's really not that difficult to do when you try to develop an angle from the start. You could try like a deconstruction or a dark reimagining, which believe it or not are two different things. I see the word deconstruction misappropriated so many times. In conclusion, Digimon has always been a series that lives in the shadow of other more popular ones. And it has always thrived in that environment by presenting us with a viable alternative. So if the question is, what's a viable alternative to Yokai Watch? Well, the current answer for now is, I hope Applemon will give us that answer. Until next time, this is Kodak signing off.